Hello everyone, my name is PJ, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy 2 on the Famicom, part 5. Okay, I wasn't able to get quite as much grinding done as I wanted to when I last left off. I mean, everyone's over 200 hit points. I don't know if they were there when I last left off, it's been a few days. But I got a lot of their spells pretty close to level 4. It's getting harder to level spells up now because the rank is starting to take a toll on how much experience we get. Because the higher the rank of the spell you're trying to level, and the lower the rank of the enemies that you're fighting, the bigger the penalty the game imposes on how much experience that spell gets at the end of the fight. Same goes for weapon skills. Now, the easiest way to max out cure, of course, is to just use it outside of battle because you always get one experience when you do that. But I'm also trying to raise their spirit scores, so I'm trying to use it in combat as much as possible. Yeah, Maria's offensive spells are both level 4, so that's pretty cool. And I got Azuna to level 2. Azuna is so hard to level, because you have to use the attack cancel exploit on it, because how often is a character going to have a permanent status on them that you need to cast Azuna on? The only effective way to level Azuna is with the attack cancel exploit. Same with life, and same with any other healing spell that isn't cure. Yeah, but check this out. Varian's agility is still 10. He has 70% evasion, and his agility has not gone up one point this whole game. I know how it's supposed to work. Your agility goes up when you are the target of attacks. And the amount it goes up is based on your evasion. But it's not going up. Even if I put everyone else in the back row and make Virian get hit by all of the attacks, it doesn't go up. I don't know what to do. I, I have looked it up. I have looked up guides for every version of this game, and it's, it seems to be different in every game, and there's a lot of argument over exactly what causes agility to go up. But the other characters' agilities are going up, even Guys. Guys has gotten three points of agility, and he has less evasion, and started with less agility. I don't know what to do. But, either way, Today, we're going to be going back to Altair, so that'll take me a while to walk to. Guy just gained another point of agility. He was in the back row. He shouldn't have even been able to be targeted. But they still try to target... They still try to target characters in the back row with melee, even though it can't work. See, this is my current strategy. Virion's the only one in the front row, so he's the should be the most likely target of attacks. And he is getting hit more, I've noticed. But they're still trying to hit the characters in the back row with melee, even though it doesn't work. And I'm just sitting here, praying... Oh yeah, the characters in the back row can't hit them with melee, but I just made them waste their turn. I'm just sitting here praying that they'll hit Firion, and hopefully at the end of the fight, he'll gain a point of agility. I'm, sh I'm certain that once he's gained that first point of agility, he'll have no problem gaining more. I even have Firion dual wielding shields in order to make his evasion as high as possible, and to reduce the amount of damage enemies take from his attacks, and extend the fight length. He got hit a lot. Come on. His shield leveled up. So, what's his evasion percentage now? Still 70%? Ah, oh, whatever. What is that number in front of the 70%? How do you raise that? Hmm... The only way I can think of to guarantee that Virion gets hit a lot is to kill off all the other party members. That way he's the only possible target. 
Unless this game is so poorly programmed that enemies try to kill dead characters too. Anyway, we're back at Altair. Probably run into another fight before I get into it. Nope, okay. Let me save. Okay, so. Now that we have rescued the people of Basque, who I forgot to speak to. It's fine. We'll be going back there later anyway. Need to pick up another Azuna Tome at some point. Where is everyone? There's no one outside. Uh, okay. Well, let's go see the princess. And see what our next mission is. Sid might know if the Dreadnought has any weaknesses. Oh, they're hiding from the Dreadnought. Oh yeah, that's right. I got something to show you. He's the first person to ever build an airship. Where is Prince Gordon? Prince Gordon went away? He's not in here? Okay. The Dreadnought attacked. At least our hideout is safe. Oh, right. Uh, in the remakes, they make it more apparent that the Dreadnought attacked some of these towns. Because there's like... Craters and broken buildings and stuff. You can still access all the buildings, and there don't appear to be any implied casualties, so it seems to be mostly warning shots. Everyone who was outside is dead. Oh, never mind. Is that guy walking around the fountain? Uh, I guess he's dead. But there seems to be more people in here? I don't know. If we don't destroy the Dreadnought, more people will die. Please, Lord, save our king. Huh. That's gotta be the only religious reference in this whole game. Next to things like the holy spell and stuff. We didn't really talk about having a deity. They implied it in Final Fantasy 1 with the churches. And there are sanctuaries in this game with statues of some kind of female deity, but they don't go into detail about it. I'm scared. The Dreadnought attacked Altair. Fortunately, the hideout is unscathed. The townspeople have taken refuge here. We'll stay here and hold out until you return. Now, I haven't visited the king in a while. Let's go check up on him. The king is not well. So we've lost Scott. He was going to propose to Hilda, you know. I always thought he'd make a fine husband for her. Ask Dreadnought. The Empire is building- What? No one told me of that! Wow, okay. What dicks? I see. They didn't tell me for fear of worrying me. Long ago, Mithra was in common use. Mithra was mined in the north near Summit Falls. Oh, okay. You know what a dreadnought is, but you don't know what an airship is? <sighs> okay, let's go see the princess. For real this time. Oh! And this, pretty sure, is the part where Minwu leaves our party. For good. So, let's take all of his stuff before he leaves. Including your armor. We can sell that at least. Do we stand a chance against the Dreadnought? They finally finished the Dreadnought. Let's see what this cranky old man has to say. I called it! Obviously the task was more than you could handle! <laughs> I love that guy. I don't know why. Anyway, bye Minwoo. Many were hurt during right, by the Dreadnought's attack. My father's condition is worsening from all the stress. Is there nothing you can do, Minwoo? It is my duty to ease the pain of the wounded. I shall remain here to watch over the king. I take my leave of you. Varian, waste no time in destroying the Dreadnought. Yeah, we kinda got a couple dungeons to do before that. Minwu leaves the party. Ask about the Dreadnought. Are you serious? Uh, fine, let's go see if Minwu is by the king. The king's illness is severe. There is little I can do. Ask about the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought is a massive airship. It is likely they function similarly. Sid gave up all he had for his airship. His rank, his honor, his family. Everything. Uh, what do I do? 
So many perish in the Dreadnought's attack. Perhaps we should surrender. Why is that available as a keyword again? I already have it. He just gave me the Dreadnought keyword. But he doesn't know anything about it. Let's go talk to the princess again. My father's condition is improving thanks to Minwu. Ask about the Dreadnought. Many lives were taken in the Dreadnought's attack. That thing is so horrible. Ask Airship. Ask Mytho. Ask Wild Rose. Oh my god! What do I do? How do I progress the story from here? I know what the next part is. Do I have to just leave and go talk to Sid? Is that what they're implying? Let me talk to the townspeople. Yeah, yeah, where is Prince Gordon? Come on. Sid might know if the Dreadnought has any weaknesses. He's the first person ever to build an airship, okay? <sighs> It'll be a long walk, but... Let's go talk to Sid, I guess. Maybe I'll just take the ferry. We're back on the topic of my strategy of um, getting Furion's agility up. Yeah, uh, it would... It wouldn't be all that big a deal if I killed my party members because I don't think it matters too much how strong the enemies are, like what their rank is, as long as Virion is the target of attacks. At least that's as far as my understanding goes, so I don't have to worry about Virion getting, you know, murdered by being by himself. That's like the fairy. Yeah, and since it's free to revive dead party members, uh, I can just pick up and go whenever. It'll be cheaper to rest at the end while I'm tr trying to beef up Firion. And since he'll be dual wielding shields, attacking with him is effectively like skipping his turn. He can occasionally damage things with the shields. Occasionally. So the fights wouldn't last forever. You know, ride 32 Gil will take you to Poft. Yes, please. Done. Just board the ship in front of town and off you go. Yeah, there's no ship theme in this game. Technically, there is, though. It's on the soundtrack, but they didn't use it. I guess because they thought I sounded too happy? There's also a third battle theme that has never been used. It's only on the NES soundtrack. It's never been used. I don't know why. But yeah, let's go talk to Sid. Please progress the story. Oh, everyone's gone. Wow, okay. Ask about the Dreadnought. You need to blow up the engine to destroy that ugly thing. Airships are powered by Sunfire. There we go. Thank you, Sid. The Dreadnought is no different. Learn Sunfire. Ask Sunfire. Controlling Sunfire is tricky. Let the flames get too high, then it'll blow up. Okay. So, now I have to go all the way back to Altair and ask about the Sunfire so that they'll tell me where to find it. Okay. Please progress the story. Ask Sunfire. Sunfire is the crest of the Kingdom of Kashwan, where Gordon and Scott are from. Its flame still burns in the ground floor of Kashwan Keep. Scott and Gordon have told me that the flame cannot be passed at just any torch. Perhaps we can use Sunfire to destroy the Dreadnought. Ah, then you must depart for Kashwan Keep at once. Sid's airship can take you there. But what can you use to bring the Sunfire back? Hmm. Wow, uh, they kind of leave you in the dark about that in the original version of this game, don't they? Because I know what you need to get, and I know where it's located, and what you need in order to... Hold on. Yeah, someone came home and so the dogs are going crazy. 
since we're on the topic, check out what I made. I made a door hanger for my door to tell people when I'm playing games and recording for YouTube. There's also another side that tells them when I'm playing d and I just made this last night. Let me go hang this up. Okay, now that, that disaster is out of the way. Let's go talk to Minwoo. Uh, ask Sunfire. Every three years, they celebrate a festival of the flame in Kashwan. The Sunfire is passed to Ejil? Ejil? Egil? I'm gonna say Ejil. The Sunfire is passed to Ejil's torch while its brazier is cleansed. I've been saying Brazier for years, so it was only recently corrected. It's Brazier. Uh, why isn't Ejil's torch a keyword? Uh, I don't know. Um, hmm. Oh, maybe I can ask the king about it. Ask Sunfire. Scott sealed the gates of Kashwan Keep to protect the Sunfire in case they were defeated in battle. You will need the goddess's bell to break the seal. Learn goddess's bell. There we go. But there's another reference to the goddess. Huh. Then why did that old man outside say, Lord, does this world have more than one deity? They really don't go into detail about it. Ask Goddess's Bell. The whereabouts of the bell are known only to the Kashwan royal family. Hmm. And Gordon's nowhere to be found. Uh, ask you about the Goddess's Bell? Gordon would know where the bell is kept, but I haven't seen him lately. Someone close to Scott or Gordon may know where to find it, like Hilda. Ask Goddess's Bell. I've heard Scott and Gordon mention the bell. The gates of Kashwan Keep open only to the voice of a Kashwan or the sound of that bell. The bell rests deep within a cavern on the snow plains. You plan on going there? If only Gordon were here, there would be no need for you to risk such danger. Joseph knows the snow plains at like the back of his hand. You should seek his counsel. Okay, thank you. Now we go meet Joseph again. You remember Joseph, right? He's the guy that sent us to rescue his daughter and the other people of Salamant, and then didn't reward us. But I did say he would owe us. Time has come. Holy fuck! Holy fuck! Varian's agility went up! His agility finally went up. That only took five parts. <laughs> I mean, effectively, seven hours. <laughs> Why? And seriously, what is the evasion stat? How do I make that two? What is that? Hmm. I, I don't know. How did I get magic resistance to two or accuracy to five? I don't know how those go up. But now that the agility has been raised, hopefully that means it'll rise more often from now on. I think it's safe to put my allies in the front row again. I don't think it was doing any good anyway. Okay, we're in Salamant. Let's go talk to Joseph. Do these people say anything new? No. Hi Nelly. Hi Joseph, you bald bastard. You saved my daughter. Thank you. That cow- uh, yeah, you said it's the same thing before. Ask... Goddess's Bell. You need my snow craft to reach the snow cavern. It's hidden in the mine. Look for a blue stone on the first floor and head right to the secret room. Let's go! Joseph joined the party! Second guest party member. Now, Joseph is a monk. He starts with decent- look at him. Oh, jackass. But no, Joseph is actually a really cool guy. He's he's untrustworthy even at first, but other than that, he's a pretty cool character, actually. Yeah, but he starts with jack shit for MP, really high HP, really high strength, agility, and stamina. Look at that. And he starts with a 2 in his unarmed skill. Kinda wish that was higher, 
but whatever. That's still cool. I don't have to give him anything. His evasion is somehow too. I don't know what that means. I still don't know how that all works, but I don't have to give him any magic. He is a pure monk. All he has to do is punch it to death. Yeah, so I'm just going to be raising his fists and literally nothing else. I'll let his natural HP and stuff go up on its own. Yeah, let's look at his uh, battle sprite. Oh, we can't see it here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let me heal up at the end, and then we'll head off to Summit Falls. Okay, you should remember the way to Summit Falls from before. Go all the way west and ride the river to the cave. That's a weird sprite. Although I guess it does kind of look like him. Hmm. Okay, back to Summit Falls. Now you remember I pointed this blue stone out in the beginning of the game. Yeah, this section right here. Joseph turns a small rock and a passage appears. The snow crafts in here. Uh, why is that menu pop up? Anyway, right in here is a chest containing the snow craft. Now that we have it, we can traverse this huge snow field up to the north that for some reason, the game doesn't even let you step into until you have this item. I guess it's considered too... treacherous? Well, whatever. Well, the next big dungeon is uh, the Snow Cave. Where we'll find the Goddess's Bell. And it's a pretty big dungeon, and it's the only dungeon that Joseph will join us for. I'm not going to be doing the whole thing in this episode. I don't think I can. So... I'm going to show you a bit of the cave, and then that'll be the end of the video, and hopefully I can do some grinding between the videos this time. Some decent grinding. Maybe get another point of agility for Virion. Because, seriously, out of all my stats, that's the one I'm worried about most, because I have a terrible track record when it comes to evasion in this game. The first time I played this game, and the GPA, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing, and basically struggled my way, like running from all encounters, and just playing as hard as I could to beat the final boss. It was frustrating, and really, really difficult. I ended up save-stepping, because I think in that version you can save anywhere. And when I went up to play the PS1 version, which didn't have all the refined mechanics of the GBA version. Um, I had no idea how agility and evasion worked, and that really fucked me over when I got to one of the last dungeons, and I ended up having everyone dual wield shields just to get their evasion high enough to run from all the encounters. <sighs> then, I played the PSP version, and that went much better. If I had to say which version of Final Fantasy II was the best, it's probably the PSP version. And it's the one that they've re-released the most so far. They put it on iPhones and Android, and I don't remember if they put it on Steam. But yeah, that's... That's the main version of Final Fantasy II right now, even though it's been out for like a decade. I'm really hoping that someday they'll actually remake all the classic Final Fantasies properly. None of this low-poly, cheapified Nintendo DS bullshit. Have I mentioned that I don't like the 3D remake of 3? I'll be getting into that when I go to play 3. You see? Varian got another point of agility. Already, it took me seven hours to get the first point, and in the same hour I got another one. And here we go. Here is the Snowcraft. Starting with the first remake, effectively all of the versions of this game except this one, there's actually a mini game that you can access once you're on the Snowcraft by. It's similar to accessing the sliding mini game in Final Fantasy 1, 
You just get on the snowcraft and rapidly tap a bunch of buttons. In the remakes, it opens up a memory minigame where you can, um, where you play that. I'm assuming you all know how to play memory, also known as concentration. And you win prizes. Uh, not, not just in how little time it takes for you to beat it, but also in how few guesses that you can do it in. Um, but there's a trick to cheating it. <laughs> that I learned when I played the PS1 version. Uh, there's only 40 combinations. And they cycle in order. So if you write down all 40 combinations of the minigame, then you'll know what the pattern is every time after that. So you can just instantly win minigames without any, any mistakes and get tons and tons of money and items. Yeah. There's also a secret to the minigame where um, I think you can get better prizes if you max out someone's toad spell and then all of the uh, all of the cards which normally show the characters faces all of the cards change to their frog portraits because when a character is turned into a toad in this game uh, they get a unique portrait that shows them as a toad it's it's weird I, I don't know I guess they were trying to turn toad into like a semi mascot ish kind of spell But you don't really get that vibe from any other Final Fantasy. It's mostly just this one and one episode of Final Fantasy Unlimited. I'm never going to actually get to talk about Final Fantasy Unlimited much, am I? That's not a game. It's not like I can just watch it. Maybe I can review it, but I'm not much of a reviewer. But Final Fantasy Unlimited, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, don't listen to what people have told you. It's a good enough series. It's not Soul Eater levels of amazing or anything like that, because it was cancelled early so they had to wrap up the story as quick as possible, but it's still a fun ride. It's got plenty of adrenaline rushes in it and cool and interesting characters and scenarios. I want to say I've seen it all the way through three times. I think there's... how many episodes are there? There's five discs. I think there's about 26, 27 episodes. Here it is. Here's the entrance to the snow cave. Can I save in the snowcraft? Yes, I can. Okay. Alright, let's pop inside. One step. Okay, well, at least these things aren't all that tough. We were just fighting them outside and I barely even noticed. Didn't even mention them. They're just recolors of the Sasquatch. I didn't even know they were new enemies. But yeah, Final Fantasy Unlimited is cool. Final Fantasy The Spirits Within is a million times better than people give it credit for. The movie's a fucking masterpiece does not deserve its reputation. Okay, up these long ass stairs. Makes you wonder if those stairs will be of any importance later. You know what I wanted to do back when I built that replica of Cornelia in Minecraft? I wanted to go even further. I wanted to rebuild the entire Final Fantasy 1 world map in Minecraft. I had a plan for how I would do it too, but god damn, that's too much work. Especially for only one guy. And for a guy who doesn't know how to use console commands well enough to, you know, quickly build things. The walls of Cornelia Castle in Minecraft, I built by hand. Without flying. Well, I probably flew. But I didn't use that one command where you can just make a wall or a filled-in block of one material, because I didn't know how to do that. Ooh, chest. What's new? 100 gil. Nah. 
Ooh, undead. Uh, let's see, that's a regular zombie. Gores, which... Okay. Well, that's one D&D &D enemy. Yeah, guy's currently dual wielding shields, because I'm because he has the lowest agility and I'm trying to get it up. So he can't hit for shit. And all of his weapon skills are really low anyway, so Yeah, like I said, I'm making him a white mage. Yeah, they're not so bad. At least enemies don't cause any weird special effects yet. Like, this is one enemy we'll be running into relatively soon called Stunners. That immediately tells you what they do. Ugh. Hate those things. One goal, no problem. And there are enemies late in the game who drain your health, drain your MP. And of course, enemies that can petrify, instantly kill. Etc. Etc. You know the drill. Hmm? Yeah. See this door? Yeah. You can't examine it and you can't go through it, so it makes you wonder what it's for. Well, it's similar to a dungeon in Oblivion. It's a shortcut back to the entrance. A one-way shortcut. And I will totally be playing Oblivion at some point. I'll probably play all the Elder Scores games. I've been thinking about whether or not I actually should go through with my Dark Souls Let's Play. Because I was planning on doing it soon, but it would be so hard to save and upload videos of that quality. Because I noticed a considerable drop in saving and uploading speed with my Apis game videos. And I'm assuming it's because they were a lot more colorful than the other games I've played. So, how fucking long would it take for a Dark Souls video to go up? That and Dark Souls 1 is already really laggy as it is. How bad would it be on my shitty laptop? Well, laggy already on my laptop. I mean, how laggy would it be if I was recording it? And my webcam. It'd be a mess. I mean, I've already did a test recording of me playing Dark Souls. And it seemed to come out pretty fine. But that was only about two minutes. Is that a trap door? I think it's a trap door. I might as well check it out. It's not like the enemies here are tough. Yeah, it's a trap. And I was ambushed. Great. No biggie, though. Ooh. Icicles. Yeah, these things look weird on the remakes. Uh, how tough are you? Not tough at all. Yes, please. Hit very and more. Okay, um... Let's go this way. Oh. Arctic Wind. Yeah, that's a spellcasting item. It likely casts some really high level of Blizzard. Maybe Blizzard 16. Okay, back to the entrance of this floor. Let's go south next. Uh, see? Apparently they call it Hold in this. Isn't that what the name of the Paralysis spell in Final Fantasy 1 was called? Hold? Oh, it wore off immediately. Okay, it's only temporary, but yeah, it's paralysis. It's uh, like a, it's like a it's the same thing as stun was in Final Fantasy One, or at least what my bomb hack called it anyway. But in all the remakes, that status effect is just referred to as paralysis, which is typically temporary in every game it appears in.
Alright, uh, that looks like the correct way to go. Let's go south first. Ooh, look at that! What are those called? I missed their names. I think these are grenades. Still no bombs yet, but they're coming. I better take out the grenades first. Their explosions are probably much stronger. Oh, we ambushed them. Cool. No doubt due to our ridiculously high evasion and agility scores. You know what I haven't checked yet? I haven't checked to see what Joseph comes with. Like, Minwoo came with a couple of items. Uh, let's see. Oh, leather helmet? Oh, let me get rid of that. Oh my god, you could be doing so much better without this shit weighing you down. And let me just take these off your hands. That's a good Joseph. Okay, there you go. Now his accuracy is 99%. Because he's not wearing gloves. You know, most games would make gloves give you an accuracy bonus, but whatever. I guess it's kind of more realistic. I don't know. It, it'd make more sense if, say, wearing gauntlets give you more accuracy with melee weapons, wearing leather gloves make give you more accuracy with bows, but I think that's even too complicated for this game. Oh, another staircase? Huh. Which direction do I go? Well, either way, I'm out of time. Overtime, actually. So, this is where I'm gonna stop. Between episodes, I'm gonna do some grinding, maybe go back to town, but I'm not going to go down either of those staircases. So, thank you all so very much for watching. If you liked this episode, leave a like. I'm just starting out, and every like means a lot to me. And if you want to be notified when I upload more videos, subscribe, and you will. And if you want to support me on Patreon, there'll be a link to the annotation in the annotations at the end of the video and in the description below. Sorry, I got a bit distracted by the reminder that annotations are going away. Yeah, I did say that before. I'm gonna need to come up with a new way to do my outro. Which sucks so hard. But I'll save that for after I finish this Let's Play. It shouldn't take me until May. I, I got enough time. So, I'll see you all in the next video. Yes! Yes! Ugh. Oh god. I, I have to wiggle back and forth in order to walk straight.